Hey folks, we're going to do a deeper dive on the Space Weather Health article from this week. You might recall that we've long been tracking the articles about our health being affected by solar flares, cosmic rays, geomagnetic storms, solar wind fluctuations, and more. Well, this article is suggesting that the cardiovascular events, specifically fatal infarctions and strokes, are more correlated to the localized ionospheric parameters that are responding to space weather. The article identifies regional variability matching the implied concentration of electric charge at the ground due to space weather activities. And this is, of course, perfectly sensible. It's not the thing 93 million miles away or way up at the edge of our magnetosphere. It is the linked effects all the way down through Earth's geomagnetic and geoelectric systems and the atmospheric system full of that polar dihydrogen monoxide molecule. You are familiar with many of the indices that we could track for this in the future. The experimental geoelectric fluctuation map of the U.S. would be a great thing to have worldwide. It would directly describe the ground-level electric changes due to space weather. Even worldwide, we can monitor the effects of space energy down through the layers of the ionosphere across all latitudes and longitudes. By the way, I'm generally showing quiet periods here so that anomalies might stand out by comparison. But just be sure not to be fooled by the slightly intensified region that is always caused by sunlight on some portion of the map. Hopefully you can see on the scale that the more extreme color shifts are what you would be looking for in the layers, total electron content, etc. That includes the specific solar flare risk, which can act on the sunlit area much like a cosmic ray ground level event. Even though most solar flare energy is directly absorbed in the upper atmosphere, the cascade and secondary effects, including from magnetic crochet atmospheric currents and direct geomagnetic induction, can indeed touch the ground. Luckily, those are confined to the more extreme flare events, however. The bottom line is that this new study does two things for observers already in the right mindset. It confirms many of the correlations documented over the last half century by explaining how it works mechanistically and going beyond melatonin light effects or magnetic field fluctuations. Electric charge in the atmosphere has been implied to be tied to weather, earthquakes, and technological anomalies. And now the other piece of the puzzle we have always discussed with space weather, our health, is officially tied to these large-scale electrical connections. Hopefully one day a widespread data collection system will allow for usable data for health risks on this scale. Right now it is mostly modeling. The real point here is that our understanding of space weather and human health is absolutely progressing. Be safe, everyone.